Hello everyone and welcome to another Bible study and episode review in Shady Oak Ministries. I'm of course Shady Oak and today we'll be going over episode 8 of season 4 of the TV show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. The episode Rarity Takes Manhattan. In several other puns we are actually entering into the first of many of the key episodes in what was in that mysterious little box that we saw at the start of the two-part season premiere. And in noting this we're going to, total pun intended, discover what the key to real generosity is. And if you could turn with me again to the book of James chapter 3 verses 13 through 18, a verse we've discussed in a Rarity and Fluttershy episode previously before, and green is not your color from season 1, and as well in the previous study, Bats, which I encourage you greatly to listen to as well. We had a lot of fun recording it. In verse 13, we get the basic emphasis of what it means for not only conflict resolution, but conflict execution, so to speak. What it means to not only, well, for all intents and purposes, overcome obstacles, but to survive through opposition. And in this, again, you can hear the words of James, very wisely spoken, who is wise and understanding among you? That's a question. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Now, here is the basic gener- definition of generosity. is loving without restraint, seeking another's gain even at a loss to yourself, and giving what is desired, not deserved. And going over these three short descriptions of what it means to be generous at heart, I want to use three specific examples, two of which were illustrated very well in this episode, and the third being the ideal in the life and character of Jesus Christ himself. The first that we mentioned was loving without restraint. We saw this in Rarity's music number, literally right after the go. You can listen to the lyrics and watch the music video, especially Rainbow Dash's face when she was questioning Pony's dropping into musical numbers at the drop of a hat. Classic. But you saw that Rarity's character was to share without a second thought any and every good thing that she had to bring a smile to someone else's face. As she put it, she's the smile patrol. She goes around trying to make people's days, regardless of the expense to herself. Her goal is, I'm going to love people, and I'm not going to hold back. It's literally a Pinkie Pie parade gone in the elegance and form of Rarity. She's doing it with style basically. Not only overly executed, but well executed every single time. And in this, we also see the anti-rarity with her, actually the same voice actress, but a Manhattanite accent, Suri Polymer, where she also didn't restrain herself from any good thing that she saw for herself, even if it meant hurting someone else. Suri was very generous. She loved herself without restraint. But note that. She loved herself without restraint. She valued herself more than the people around her, thus sought to build herself up instead of spread it. Now, in comparing these two personalities, let's look at the life of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Verses 30 through 31, Jesus is actually giving a reiteration of the Beatitudes, which we read in Matthew chapters 5 through 7, where Jesus is basically not telling us what it means to live a Christian life, but literally what the life of Christ was like and how we don't match up to it. It's saying, this is the person who keeps the law in the entirety. This is the perfect human character. It's not the do attitudes, it's the be attitudes. It's the I am statement from I am himself. <laughs> And in verses 30 30 through 31, Jesus said, Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. We remember this is the golden rule. And we saw that in this episode, not only was Rarity taken advantage of, but Suri was being very, very manipulative and cruel. But Jesus' character is as such that he loves without restraint 
and is good even if people are bad. That's the heart of generosity is that he's going to be good no matter how it's returned to him. And that's oftentimes the hardest thing about being generous is knowing that people will take advantage of you. And knowing that there are bad people out there who's going to value themselves more than you and take full advantage of someone's generous character, you're not always going to get the return. But Jesus says, you know what? Character's more important to me than that. And that's the illustration of a real generous heart, is someone who loves without restraint even when it's not returned. Now, the second point that we discussed was seeking another's gain even at the loss to yourself. Rarity sought her own gain even at the loss of her friends. Now, you're starting to see a distortion. I mean, what happened? Wasn't Rarity kind of a positive example? Well, this is where Suri's interaction kind of falls into this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33, Paul the Apostle laid it plain out on the table saying, Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Your friends affect you a lot more than you think. And it's not just the people that you're friends with. It's the people that you hang out with and spend time with, the role models, the people that we watch on TV. That's why I put so much emphasis into celebrating My Little Pony as the work of God that it is, because whether or not the writers intend to do it, they are setting examples and illustrating points directly from God's Word. And I would want no shorter thing than for the adults of of the modern-day world especially in the world that we live in, and the youth, the children of tomorrow, looking to a show like My Little Pony, both boys and girls, to see this as examples and character worth following and loving each other accordingly, whether they recognize the original source or not. And we would note this as noting that even someone like Rarity, when she surrounded herself with cruel people, and just like David said, when he saw the wicked in their prosperity, I almost fell. What do you think he was falling into, into following their example and saying, well, there's no profit in all of this, but then the psalm continues in saying, until I saw their end, until I saw God's throne and how they would be accounting for it all in the end. And that's when everything got set straight for him, because here's the example that Jesus set in Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Literally, he was going to give everything away and lose everything that he had for the sake of someone who wasn't even born yet, who didn't even care to know his name, who wanted to know him but didn't deserve him, and most of all, people who would ultimately, in the end, reject him. He died for all of them. That's the second aspect of generosity, is that he sought others' gain, even the loss to himself. Suri's influence corrupted Rarity in that, in that she sought gain even at a loss to others. But in that twisting and that corruption and selfishness of character and pride, we start to see where the pivotal point and real source of a generous heart is all about. Because this is where we get to the third point, is that giving what's desired, not deserved, makes up a generous spirit. Rarity asked for forgiveness from her friends, even though she knew she didn't deserve it. She treated them like jerks. I mean, you guys have seen what I learned this time in the short 15-second description of this entire episode is that your fr- you can love your friends even if they're a jerk to them. That's why they're your friends, right? With the little whip illustration and all that. She asked forgiveness even though she didn't deserve it. Suri, on the other hand, thought she deserved to win because she played smarter and desired the victory more. She manipulated Rarity and tried to send her off, knowing that Prim had basically been on an emotional streak and saying, I don't want to talk to anybody, I don't want to see Rarity, that fashion piece was a disaster, whatever. Distance yourself. I played smarter, thus I deserve more. Note, the focus was Surrey. Rarity's focus was the restoration of a relationship. And note, a generous, speak, a generous spirit seeking generosity even when it's not merited. Because this is where we get the illustration of Jesus. And before I even get into a verse, we get the illustration of Jesus in this episode, even if it was only at the last second. It was in our dear background pony, a new introduced friend of rarity, Coco Pommel, in which she recognized that both desired the victory, but the one who accepted the fact Note, fact, that they didn't deserve it, actually 
earned it. In which we get to the verse that this is so beautifully illustrated from the mouth of Jesus himself. This is a parable where Jesus was speaking concerning people who trusted in themselves to be righteous, to be good enough, who thought they deserved all of the perks in life because they were so good and so smart and so affluent at everything. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector, literally a publican, someone who had sold out their country for the sake of making a quick buck. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even, and note he points him out, this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. But, and this tax collector, and this tax collector standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus speaking, this man went home to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. That's the key to generosity. Humility. Let each esteem others better than himself, Philippians chapter 2 says. In fact, in the whole illustration, I'd encourage you to read the passage on your own time. Verses 3 through 4, we get a description of just the character of Jesus Christ and that he, being God, made himself of no reputation, not flaunting it about like it was some privilege to be had in life, but became obedient to the Father, even to death, a death so horrible as the death of the cross, having been highly exalted above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, he has sat down at the right hand of God the Father. And in noting this, we saw the generous spirit of Jesus paying off because in the end, who did he answer to? Himself, ironically, but (laughs) in this case, it applies to you and me. Is that what are we going to do with the generosity that God has not only given us, but shown us as well. And note, I'm speaking to a bunch of people here who probably are a little bit short-sighted on their tithing records, or perhaps aren't known to have the people, you know, handing out water bottles and bags of chips and, you know, paper towels and all this different stuff to homeless people on the side of the street. Note, generosity is a gift from God because it's a part of God's character. And if you don't have it, note, it's one thing to ignore it. It's another thing to just not be called to it. So I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. But what I do want you to be convicted about and to listen to God on is, note, God has given us all generosity, whether it's shown or to be shared. How do we use it? And it's this that I want to recognize. How do you see other people? Do you look down on them? Compare yourself to them? Do you look up to people? Or do you know that we all stand on the same ground and value others just as you know how valued you are? Because note, our sense of self-worth, if it's all about self-esteem and falling in love with ourselves, no one needs help with that. Our culture has made it so that we go to psychologists and therapists to make us fall in love with ourselves again. But the only place that's going to leave you is to Surrey. Because if the only source of your love based on yourself is going to lead to pride, why would you give to anyone else if not seeking your own gain first? Why would you ever even have time for anyone else? It's a pony-eat-pony town. And Coco Pommel, who could have been and ended up being an illustration of Jesus Christ, could have been just one more voice swept up in the wind and caught in their own ego. And rarity for a time was caught in it just like we all are and have been. I myself could not stand up to you guys honestly and say that I don't struggle with pride. I am the most arrogant person I know because I know my own heart. But that's only because God's shown it to me and I have asked him to forgive me. And the process is ongoing. None of us will be perfect in humility until we see Jesus face to face. 
but the process can start today. The key to generosity and unlocking it in your heart to not only share it with others, but being able to receive it starts with that one generous offer that began when Jesus gave everything up for you and showed it to you. Because the best way to recognize if something has, can fit in your heart, like that key fitting perfectly into the lock, is how can you receive it? How can you unlock that aspect of your character and let God's spirit shine? And note, this is a hint as to what we'll be leading to when all six keys fit perfectly into our lives in the completed work of God's Holy Spirit, letting the rainbow remind us that God's light will always shine. But starting today, starting with generosity, nothing is more important, and I believe no accident, that this was mentioned first as among anything and the most important thing before any other move of God is done in your life is how do you receive how generous he's been to you? Can you accept the forgiveness that you don't deserve? It's not whether or not you earned it. He gave it to you. But can you receive it? That's the test as as to whether or not the key of generosity can fit in your heart, is can you humble yourself enough to say, I need a Savior. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus, and following after him for the rest of your life. And note, that doesn't mean perfection, but it does mean allowing a process. And I hope and pray that that is the reality that all of you will be experiencing from this day on. Thank you for your time and listening to this study. I hope it's been a blessing to you as much as it has been to me. And if you have questions or would like to know more concerning these topics, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like more specifically on the topic of generosity, we have a topical study on the specific elements of harmony, which I encourage you to go back to. A little bit more of a lengthy study, but it was more in the earlier days of the channel, so if you don't mind the scratchy audio editing, I encourage you to enlighten yourself more on other biblical themes that illustrate this point. But going more importantly than anything else, whether encouraging this channel, whether just sending out an invitation, and allowing each of you guys to be generous in all of your guys' selves, if you want to help the gospel, go out to our fan base. Please share the study with anyone you feel would be blessed by it. Seek another's gain, just like God sought yours. Thank you for your time, and God bless you.